I have officially reached the nesting phase in this pregnancy, so come along with me for a couple of days and we're just going to get some stuff done around the house, we'll give you a little farm update, and we're going to do lots of stuff in the kitchen. I've got a couple new recipes for you and just sharing some old recipes too that I have had on my blog but I don't know if I've ever shared here on YouTube. So. The first thing we are going to be doing this morning is making some liquid laundry detergent. And I am using liquid Castile soap. So if you are subscribed here, there's a very good chance that you found me through my DIY laundry detergent video. And that video, I will link, just look up in the corner. I'll link it for you guys. You can click it and watch it. For an in-depth tutorial on my original video, I did use bar soap. So that involves grating up the bar soap, um, heating it, melting it, but the rest of the process is pretty much the same. This is a little bit easier using liquid Castile soap. You saw I just poured the whole thing in my big bucket here. Now, you don't have to make a big batch like I am. You can actually make one gallon of this, just a small batch if you want to try it, but... I have been using it for years and years and I know I like it so I make big five gallon batches so I poured in this bucket before before the boiling water I poured a uh, cast liquid Castile soap borax and washing soda and I will link the full recipe in the description but um, essentially if you are just making a gallon it's a really easy to remember it is one cup of liquid Castile soap one cup of borax and one cup of washing soda and then just a few cups of boiling water to kind of help all that dissolve and then fill the rest of the gallon up with water and let it sit for a day it will turn into like a gel and it will be ready to go so I just quadrupled that recipe because um, liquid Castile soap, one little container is, is a quart. That's four cups. So I did four times everything. And this took me, I don't know, the longest part was just boiling a little bit of water. So I had hot water to pour into the bucket. Aside from boiling the water, it's just a few minutes. And I stirred everything up, had my little... I think this is like a half gallon dispenser here that I will keep on my um, washer and it's good to go. So if you have questions like is this safe to use in an HE washing machine or you want to know more details, just go check out the um, recipe in the description. Like I said, that will be linked. Okay, little farm update. We have a new friend that came stay with us. He's going to be staying with us for a while. He's one of the people that I showed you a few videos back that is one of my family members' goals. And I'll link that video for you. If you want to go watch all about what's going on with my family and my cows and everything we're up to. But this guy just arrived. He's going to be staying with us for a few months and hopefully breeding my jerseys because they, it turns out they were not bad. You know, it is what it is. I just didn't say anything. And it turns out they weren't bred. So they might have miscarried. We had the vet come check them out. They looked healthy. But anyway, we need to get them bred. So that pretty spotted guy is going to be staying with us for a while. All right, let's fast forward to the next day. I am making something that I think I've made for you guys before, but it's been a while. I'm going to make homemade marshmallows. These are so good, and they're actually pretty high in protein. You can use powdered sugar to sweeten them, or you can use maple syrup. So if you want to stay away from powdered sugar, use maple syrup. My kids really, really like the maple ones, but they're really easy to make. I just heated up a little bit of water on the stove, added my gelatin. Um, I use like a really good grass-fed bovine gelatin. I'll link that for you guys too. And then added my um, powdered sugar, let that kind of come to a boil, and it makes just like a gel, like a marshmallowy sticky gel sauce. <laughs> Turn the heat off, um, added some vanilla, and my little guy is taking care of the biggest part of the work here over there. He is feeding my egg whites. So 
These are egg white marshmallows. That is where the protein comes in. So you just beat egg whites to uh, stiff peaks. This is like half a dozen egg whites. And then pour the uh, gelatin mixture, sugar gelatin mixture into the egg whites. Mix that together for just a minute and that's it. Then you have marshmallow fluff. There it is, very pretty, very delicious. And I'm just going to pour this into an eight by eight, let it set up in the fridge for a couple of hours and they will be ready to go. These are such a tasty treat. Like I said, they are high protein. Yes, there's sugar you can, and if that freaks you out, still try them, but just, just use the maple syrup. It's still really, really good. But I really like putting one in my morning coffee. It's really good. Okay, so I just got some butter going on the stove because we're gonna be doing some baking. I'm making some cookies, I'm gonna be baking some bread, and just doing a few things in the kitchen. So I am gonna be making sourdough cookies. It's a new sourdough cookie recipe that I will link for you guys and you'll get to see me bake them. They were so delicious, but I have to brown the butter first. I'm also going to be making a yeast bread. So I've had lots of you subscribe and really love my sourdough videos, but I also get lots of questions like, do you have any yeast bread recipes? And the answer is yes. This is how I started with baking bread. I started with yeast. I did not start with sourdough. I've been baking with sourdough for over six years now, so I've got quite a bit of experience. I feel pretty confident with sourdough, but um, before that, you know, for five, six years, I was baking exclusively, exclusively with yeast. And that is something that I still keep in my rotation because let's face it, you don't always have time to long ferment sourdough for, you know, 12 hours. Even if you've got a really active starter and you can get a loaf done in like eight hours, that's still a really long time. And with instant yeast, you can have a loaf done. I mean, gosh, I have like a quick French loaf that can be done in under an hour, um, but it, you know, a couple of hours tops with instant yeast. So anyway, I'm going to be making that, showing you guys that recipe for my um, favorite like classic white sandwich bread made with yeast and that all these recipes will be linked in the description in detail for you. I'm also out of mayonnaise and that's probably our one of our favorite condiments as a family. We go through a lot of mayonnaise so I'm just whipping up some mayonnaise here. This recipe is linked as well and homemade mayo is one of the easiest things to make and look just how rich and yellow. Well I did use a one of our eggs, um, like so that makes it, that's why it makes it really yellow. And if you add mustard, it also makes it really yellow. I just think it's really pretty. Um, very thick, just delicious. It's very easy to make. It takes under a minute. Yes, I have timed it because I was just curious to see and I put that little fact in the blog post. So it takes under a minute to pour, let's see, what was it, lemon juice, an egg, salt, mustard, and avocado oil into a jar, blend it up with an immersion blender, and then you have mayonnaise in one minute. And if you try it, you'll be hooked and you will not want to go back to the store-bought stuff, so fair warning. <laughs> All right, so I just um, kneaded my dough for my yeast bread. Gosh, I'm having a hard time thinking here. And put that in my proofing box so that it can rise and it will rise very quickly but I've got some time while I wait on that so I'm gonna work on my cookies and like I said since this is a sourdough cookie recipe um, I'll be using sourdough starter which a sourdough starter is half water half flour and as you all know we've talked about this before you just think about it a little bit cookie dough doesn't usually have water so one way to make up for that water content in the starter is to brown your butter and use egg yolks only. So you saw me pour some egg yolks into this cookie dough that I had saved in my fridge from when I made the egg white marshmallows. So it's all working out today. And then um, this recipe, these are going to be toffee crunch chocolate chip cookies, by the way, sourdough toffee crunch chocolate chip cookies. And it uses um, three quarters cup of sourdough starter. It can be either discard or active starter. It really doesn't matter. You're not going to let this sit out this cookie dough sit at room temperature and like rise or ferment or anything. Um, it has baking soda and baking powder in it, so that's what's doing like the leavening action. 
you can bake these cookies right away. You don't have to let them ferment at all. But if you really want to get some of that sourdough flavor um, and you want to cold proof the cookie dough in the fridge, you can do so overnight for a few hours or you can do so for several days and you will get a nice sourdough flavor. But since we did egg yolks only and we browned the butter, these will be very chewy, um, like chewy gooey cookies. They're not going to be cakey. So if you've ever tried sourdough cookies, you know that a lot of times they turn out like cakey, almost just like kind of like the top of a cupcake. And I don't like that. That's why I do this. When I make my sourdough cookies, I do the egg yolk brown butter trick. So uh, my daughter loves to spend time with me in the kitchen. She loves to bake and she just recently discovered toffee. I'm like, yeah, it's really good, isn't it? So last week or the week before we were experimenting and we came up with this cookie recipe. So it was inspired by my daughter's new found love for toffee and wanting to put toffee bits into everything. This cookie dough was really, really good. So I am going to let that cookie dough rest in the fridge for just a little bit. And look at this laundry soap. It just turned out perfect. So I'm telling you guys, the um, DIY liquid Castile laundry soap is definitely worth it. It does work in HE machines. That's what I have. I use it for my husband's dirty work clothes. I use it for all of our clothes. I use it for cloth diapers. And people always ask me, like, does it really work? I'm like, well, I don't, why would I share it if it didn't work? Like, I, I use it, so I think it works. I don't think we smell bad or look dirty, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just blind or something <laughs> anyway so once again that recipe will be linked for you guys just gonna get these cookies going I let them like I said let them set in the fridge for a little bit but I didn't let them cold proof overnight or anything now my dough is ready instant yeast is just magical I'm telling you guys I love sourdough but I mean how how great is this that in like what 45 minutes I can have my dough <laughs> doubled and ready to punch down and divide and shape. So I made a double batch of dough, bread dough here. This is my Amish bread, Amish yeast bread dough. It will make four loaves, the double batch. If you make a single batch, it's just two loaves. But at this point with as many people I have in my family, we do double. We just do double batches when it comes to bread. I pulled my cookies out of the oven, and I'll show you guys those in a minute. They are so, so good. In fact, um, you know, I my cookie recipe makes two dozen, but I never make the full two dozen. I always just make, like, one dozen at a time, and then I put the rest in the fridge and then make fresh cookies, like, a few days later because uh, we don't need that many cookies laying around because <laughs> we'll eat them all. But my kids did actually eat all of these in one day when I in a little bit here I'm going to talk to you guys about cloth diapers and when I was in my room talking about cloth diapers they ate all the cookies which was actually pretty funny so I'm just dividing this dough into four uh, balls of dough because I'm gonna make four loaves and I was weighing them because I'm taking pictures for the blog so I'm a little more particular when I'm going to take pictures um, this the recipe was already on the blog this is like one of the oldest recipes on my blog like I said, I started with yeast. So look how good these cookies look. They look pretty good if I don't say so myself. And I got one, but like I said, the kids went ahead and uh, took care of polishing them off for me. So at least I know that they were enjoyed. All right, so I shaped my um, four divided balls of dough and just let them rest for... I don't know, 10 minutes or so. I'm going to shape them into loaves. I've got my loaf pans prepared. I've got two different pans. So I've got cast iron and glass. And I really like cast iron because uh, it's just really easy cleanup. Like there's no cleanup. If your cast iron is well seasoned, which all of my cast iron is, I make sure to keep up with that, then it's pretty well nonstick. There are some things that are not nonstick in cast iron, like highly acidic foods or like cheesy sauces. I actually have a blog post on this, so I'll link that for you guys too. Um, just cast iron prep, if you wanna know how to season cast iron, if you wanna know how to cook in it, how to maintain it, all my favorite pieces, 
then yeah, I have that link, so go check it out. I'm going to bake these loaves. I, I did brush the tops with butter because um, why not, you know? Makes a very pretty uh, golden brown crust. You'll see when it comes out. Okay, let's get these in the oven. They will bake at 350 for half an hour, and that should give me enough time. It's afternoon now, so it's baby's nap time and kids just like playtime, quiet time, whatever. So that should give me enough time to chat with you guys a little bit about cloth diapering because I shared a little bit in the last video and you all said that you wanted to hear more. As promised in my last video, I'm going to talk with you just a little bit more about cloth diapering. This is something that I've done more and more with each baby I've had, but I did start with my first 12 years ago. So I do have experience here. I've done this, I've tried all of the different kinds of cloth diapers. And yes, there are a lot of kinds of cloth diapers. The two main reasons that most people cloth diaper, number one, to save money, and number two, because it's healthier, it's better for baby. There are, you know, toxins in everything these days. It's not something that I worry about a ton because the stress can sometimes do more <laughs> damage than worrying about toxins. So I'm not gonna freak out if my baby's in a disposable diaper or something, but I do prefer cloth. I love knowing that, you know, that fresh new baby skin is clothed in natural fibers. And 12 years ago, when I started kind of dabbling in cloth diapering, I was young and we didn't have much money. So the savings was really nice and it's something that I still enjoy to this day. However, I do want to let you guys know that <laughs> it's not always cheaper to cloth diaper. You can actually go crazy with cloth diapering and some of the diapers are so cute and they're handmade and have just the cutest patterns, but they're like over $20 a piece. And think about it, for a newborn, you're going to do like at least 12 diaper changes a day. And then if you're using cloth, you need to wash those diapers. So the absolute minimum newborn cloth diaper stash is 24 diapers, but I'm telling you that's not enough. I personally keep 48 on hand. That way I know that I've got enough diapers for a few days, enough diapers, you know, when it's laundry day, I've got enough to put in my diaper bag and I'm just set. However, if you do the super expensive cloth diapers and you do a stash of 40 cloth diapers at over $20 a pop, that adds up really quickly. That is a lot of money and that is just for your newborn stash. Yes, I'm aware that they make all in one, no, 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 it's it's one size. It's called one size cloth diapers. And here's how it's advertised. Um, the diapers, you know, they kind of like snap in the front to be really small for newborns and then they expand to be bigger for toddlers. So the theory is that they would last from newborn all the way through potty training. But, potty training. but I'm gonna tell you guys, I've tried this because it sounded so great. Like, oh, I only have to buy one size. They are so bulky on a newborn and they don't work. Those tiny little legs do not fill out those um, one size cloth diapers. It's so much material that yes, the cloth is soft and comfortable for baby, but I, I don't think it's comfortable for them to have like more diaper than baby. So I'm not a fan of the one size cloth diapers for newborns for like zero to three months actually. If you wanna do one size cloth diapers, it could work if you have a chunky baby from like three months old through potty training, but for the first few months, you really do need a smaller diaper with just a lot less fabric. Okay, so for a cloth diaper stash, I told you I like to keep about 40 cloth diapers in newborn for my newborn stash. Now, when they, babies get older, they don't go poop and potty quite as much, so 30 could get you by, but for the newborn, zero to three month phase, I like 40 cloth diapers and I'll tell you how I make that affordable. So I've got my cloth diapers in my in my stash. I also use cloth wipes. Got some right here, just like they sound, <laughs> cloth wipes. And I just keep a little plastic spray bottle with water in my diaper bag or on my bedside and I spray the wipe, not the baby's bottom because the water's gonna be cold and the baby will cry. And you don't want baby to cry, especially for those middle of the night changings. So I spray the wipe and get the wipe wet and hold my hand, warm it up a little bit and then wipe baby's little bottom, get them all cleaned up and put a new diaper on. And the great thing about using cloth wipes is it just gets washed with the diaper. So you've got, you know, your, um, oh, let me find one here, your dirty cloth diaper 
you wipe off baby, just stick the dirty wipe inside the dirty diaper, and all of it goes in your diaper laundry bag, which is called a wet bag. So I get all of my diapering supplies from Green Mountain Diaper. They do not offer discount codes. I don't have an affiliate code for you guys. They were kind enough to send me a gift card to replenish my stash for this baby since I've clothed. This will be my fifth baby in cloth diapers and I use natural fibers so cotton does break down after a few babies. You will need to replenish your stash. So thank you Green Mountain Diaper. I have used them since the very beginning. Actually, the first time that I decided to try cloth diapers 12 years ago when the inter internet, like internet shopping was still, it can still be sketchy, but it was sketchy back then too and I didn't know what I was doing. I just got like the cutest diapers for the absolute cheapest price I could find and Lord only knows where they came from, but they take like, they took like two months to arrive and the quality was horrible. So that was just money wasted. And I was like, I'm not making this mistake again. So I did a ton of research and I found out that all the cloth diapering moms really love this company, Green Mountain Diaper. And I've been with them ever since. And I have no plans of switching because they are just amazing. So we talked about our, our diaper stash, our cloth wipes. The next thing you need for cloth diapering is uh, wet bags. So wet bags are just, you know, what they sound like. They are waterproof bags to store your dirty diapers in until you are ready to wash them. I have two big bags that I can rotate out. So my these bags come from, everything you'll see here comes from Green Mountain Diaper. They've got straps. I can strap them onto my little bedside cart or you know, strap them onto your table in your changing table in your nursery, wherever. When you're done changing a diaper, a dirty diaper, just unzip it, put the diaper, dirty diaper and dirty wipe in there, zip it back up. And then when it gets, you know, halfway full or whatever, empty it into your washer, put the bag in the washer as well, and wash. Now, if you exclusively breastfeed, you do not need to rinse out poopy diapers, which is so, so nice. That makes cloth diapering so simple and so quick. It really doesn't take more time than disposable diapering. You just throw the dirty diaper in a wet bag as opposed to throwing it into a trash bag. The so breast milk baby poop is totally water soluble. It will break down in your washer. It will not ruin your washer. However, if your baby is ingesting anything aside from breast milk, that means even supplementing a little bit of formula, or if you're putting something in the baby's bottle, I don't know, or you know when it gets the baby's a little bit older, like six months, then they start to eat some solid food, you need to start rinsing poopy diapers out in the toilet with like a little sprayer and, and flushing all the solids because it will not break down in your washer and that will ruin your washer. I'll probably do another video at some point. I need to make like a whole playlist on cloth diapers and just do topical videos like, you know, laundering cloth diapers, wool, different types. I could think of so many videos to make, but I'm just trying to make it really quick for you guys. So laundering cloth diapers is really, really easy, especially if baby is exclusive, exclusively breastfed. Um, could not get any more simple. So I keep three wet bags. I have the two here at home that I rotate out because when one's being washed, then I'll use the other one. And then I have a smaller one for my diaper bag. Looks just like this, all kinds of cute patterns. So now we need to move on to, I guess I'll talk a little bit about different kinds of cloth diapers. So I said in my newborn stash, I like to keep 40. Now, if you do the, fancy cloth diapers like the all-in-ones. This is an all-in-one and it's super cute. <laughs> Meaning it's just one piece. Um, this piece snaps in, so technically it's like an all-in-two. But it's it's just one piece. There's not like an inside piece and an outside piece. You just put this on baby, snap it, and you're good to go. Okay, there's all kinds of all-in-one diapers or all-in-two diapers just like this and pocket diapers. I don't have one to show you, but there's essentially just a pocket up top where you stuff the insert down into the pocket. Um, those are probably the most popular and they're the most expensive. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I do not prefer them. I have found that those for me and for my kids tend to be the leakiest diapers. So not only are you paying a lot more to cloth diaper your baby, and yes, I guess there's like the convenience of it just being super simple in one piece, but you're paying a lot more. And like I said, I personally have found they're more likely to leak. So a lot of people will end up putting like extra padding and inserts inside and they end up really, really bulky. So I do have some of these little all-in-ones, but that is not 
what I use or what I personally recommend for cloth diaper stash, especially if you're trying to save money. If you are trying to save money, I highly recommend going with a two-piece diaper system, meaning you'll have an inner piece, which is um, cotton, or sometimes people use like bamboo, and that's what actually absorbs baby's poop and potty, and then you have an outer cover that is waterproof because these the inner parts, what I'm about to show you, they're not waterproof. Like I said, they'll, they'll absorb, but they'll also be damp on the outside and get baby's clothing wet. So you need two pieces. You need the inner part that is absorbent, and the outer part that is waterproof. So as far as inner parts to the two-piece systems, um, there are three options. I have done them all. They are all, all of these are organic cotton. Green Mountain offers organic cotton and all of their options, which I absolutely love. So option number one, this is called a fitted diaper, okay? A fitted diaper. This is just cotton. It's not waterproof. You need a second piece. This is just your inside piece that goes on baby's skin and, and it's shaped like a diaper. So you put it on baby, bring the straps around and you fasten it. Um, I do not use the pins, the safety pins. I'm not that old school. I use, these are called snappies. They're really easy. I'm not even looking, you can see, and I, I'm just able to fasten that super quickly. So you put this piece on baby, fasten it, and then you need to put a cover over this a waterproof cover. You've got a couple of options. There are pull covers. It's essentially plastic. It's what like PUL is polyurethane, polyester, urethane laminate. Sorry, I had to think there for a minute. So these are super cheap. And if I keep, which in my newborn stash, I keep like 40 diapers, which I don't keep 40 of these. I'm going to show you what I use, but I keep, if you're going to use these fitteds, you would need like 40 of them. And I think they're maybe five, six bucks a piece. So um, still cheaper than disposable diapers, but it does add up. But then you need like six to eight of these pull covers because these, like I said, they're waterproof. So every time you change baby's inner diaper, you don't necessarily need to change this outer cover unless it's damp or soiled around the edges. And I have found that after three or four diaper changes, they do get damp around the, the legs, around the edges there, so they do need to be changed, but they'll last you three or four changes. So six to eight of these covers. This brand is Rumperoos. Um, I really like Rumperoos. I like the Velcro closure. They have button closure too, but this is just what I like. I have several of these, but what I prefer for a cover, what I prefer as opposed to the pull, is wool. I absolutely love wool. This is something I was intimidated by with my first two kids. So I didn't get into it until my third, and I didn't really switch and start using it a lot until my fourth. My, my fourth, my last baby, was almost exclusively uh, wool. And I just love that it's, it's not plastic, you know? It's, it's a natural fiber, so it's so soft. And yes, this is a, a diaper cover. Even though these are pants, these are little newborn wool pants, these pants go over the diaper and serve as a waterproof diaper cover. So wool does have like kind of special care instructions. I'll do a video on this at some point. Um, it does have to be lanolized and maintained for it to be waterproof, but newborn babies, when they go potty, it's just like a tiny little bit. They're not, you know, soaking through a diaper. So you can go, you guys are not going to believe this if you're not familiar with wool, but newborn, I would say up to like three months, unless baby has a blowout and soils the wool, you can go like three to four weeks without washing and it, they will not feel damp at all or smell like urine at all. It's absolutely amazing. You can look up the properties of wool. I won't go into all of that, but that is what I prefer. So for this new baby that I'm expecting, I have 40 uh, inner pieces, which like I said, I don't use these fitteds. I use the flats, which we'll talk about in a second, which are super cheap and I love. Um, but then I only have four covers. So I have two little pairs of pants. I have a little fitted wool. Yes, this is wool, how cute is this? I've never used a little fitted wool cover like this. So I'm excited to try this and I'll probably get more if I like it. So I've got a little fitted wool cover. This is all from Green Mountain Diaper. And then I've got newborn wool shorts too. And so the cotton part goes on baby, gets fastened with the little snappy, oh, snappy that I showed you guys. A wool cover goes over it, whether it's, you know, whatever style you like, like the fitted, pants, the shorts, whatever, some kind of wool cover goes over it to keep it waterproof. And then you can put baby's clothes on. Now wool is bulky, so you're not gonna wanna put like pants on on top of wool pants. But if you use one of these little fitted wool 
covers, then you can put pants on. But I actually um, really like gowns for little babies that are not mobile yet for this reason. They make changing diapers just so easy. So I have a few different gowns for this baby. Um, and that's almost all my new babies live in. So the next option as far as the two part systems that need the inner piece and the outer piece, this is called a pre-fold and it comes in different sizes. This is a newborn size. Um, it's just several layers of cotton and it can actually be folded up and shaped into a diaper. Bring the sides around and see, now it's starting to look like a diaper. Put this on baby as the inner piece, fasten it, and then put your little cover on and you're good to go. Baby's good to go. So it's just like the first one, the fitted diaper, except you have to shape it yourself, um, but there's not a lot of folding. So pre-folds are very popular. As I said, this is a newborn size. So you're going to, if you choose the pre-fold route, actually both of these, this is like a size one or size two. It's not a newborn. But if you choose the fitted or pre-fold route, you are going to have to buy a new stash of these diapers every time your baby grows out of the current ones. So I would use the newborn pre-folds. When baby grows, I would move up to the size one, then size two, size three, size four. They're not a one size option. But the great thing is they're cheap and you get a really good fit so you have less leaks. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna show you what I use. This is the absolute cheapest option. This is the old school option. And this is the option that I was most intimidated by and I didn't try until my last baby. And it was actually talking to Karen who owns Green Mountain Diapers. She convinced me to do this. And I'm so glad she did because I have fallen in love with old fashioned flat diapers. Yes, this is a flat diaper. This is not a flower sack cloth. I kind of showed you guys in my last video how, how to fold one of these. This is a newborn size. So they do have uh, one size. So the one size diapers are just a lot of fabric. And newborns are absolutely tiny, so putting that much fabric on a newborn, it's just not good. <laughs> so these are so, so cheap. I think you can get a pack of six for like $21 or something. Um, so it's, it's dirt cheap to get a stash of $40 compared to what you'd be paying for disposables. So I have a newborn stash of flat diapers, and then I have the one size that will last all the way through potty training. These are very easy to use. Um, like I said, don't be intimidated by the folding. Even when I am going to go out somewhere, I will just fold a couple up before I go and put them like pre-folded, pre-shaped in my diaper bag and then they're ready to go on baby. It does not take that much extra time. It's maybe 10 seconds. And these work just like the pre-folds and the fitteds that I show you, you fold, showed you. You fold this diaper up. I'm not gonna do it right now because I can't do that not looking. And then you fasten it and you put your cover over it and baby is good to go. I am going to put together a blog post breaking this all down in detail and organizing lists for you guys of the supplies that I personally keep and what I prefer for cloth diapers. And I will probably do a price breakdown too because I always like to see like, what is that going to cost? Is it going to be worth it? So look for that blog post in the description and let me know if you have more questions on cloth diapers or if this is something that you want me to talk more about because I can make like short little three minute videos on like, you know, 20 different topics on cloth diapers, add them to a little playlist, save them organized as cloth diaper videos and then they're just there for you guys. Okay, good timing. Timer's going off. My bread is finished and looks delicious. So these four loaves, these are just standard loaf pans. This actually will not last us that long because like I said, my family has a lot of people and I have big kids. Big kids eat a lot more than little kids, but it'll last a week. So that's good enough. All right, fast forwarding to the next morning, my marshmallows set up and I just have to show you guys these because they're so good and they go really well in egg yolk coffee like you see here. All right, well that is all I have for you guys this week. So be sure to check the description for all the links that I mentioned and I will see you next week.